when you're living in, in the kingdom of the world and you're living under those laws and those obligations, like nothing will be enough. When I was in college, I was, I had a friend who was much cooler and more adventurous than I was. And he's like, Hey, Josh, we should go scrambling. I was like, eggs. That sounds great. I don't know. What you're... It's like, no, 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 no. We're going to pick a mountain and we're just going to run up the side of the mountain. I was like, that sounds horrible, but I want your approval. So we're going to do it. And so we spent like, I don't know, it felt like seven or eight days. It was probably more like a few hours, but we were climbing up the side of this mountain um, in, in Alberta. I was uh, in going to school in Calgary at the time. And I can see the top I'm like, I can't wait to get to that spot because that means that I can be done and my knees are going to stop burning at least until it's time to go back down. And I'm sure some other part of my body is going to start hurting uncontrollably. Uh, so I, I see that point and I get there and I realize and I learned by experience what a false summit is. Does anybody here have any familiar with the false summit? Yeah, there, there's something. So basically, it's like you're climbing up a mountain, and all you can see is a little, the top of the mountain. You get there, but you realize, oh, like, there's actually, the other summit is actually up there. But you, I couldn't see it before because my, my view was blocked by the first summit. And I was like, oh, boy, well, that's the right one for sure, because I know, I don't know why I thought it was the next one was the right one. We like hit so many false summits and then it started to snow and get dark. And I looked back and I couldn't see our trail. And then I'm like, as a child, I had, <laughs> there were a few like animals that terrified me, like rats and snakes and wolves. And I was like, I'm going to get eaten by wolves. Like I'm going to be in the news, like unidentified remains found on the side of Mount Baldy. And I was like, <laughs> it was not a great situation. Um, but like, that's kind of a life of false summits. Like, okay, that, this is where I'm going to hit. And if I can just get to that point, then I can relax, then I can rest, then I can go back down the mountain, or then, then I can, you know, whatever. If I can just get that level of success, I'll show them. Finally, I'll prove to fill in the blank that I belong. I'll finally be attractive and worth pursuing. I'll finally prove my value to, you know, and who's that person in your mind? You know, I have one boss. I was 19. He was my boss for like a year. And I still, I still think about Kevin. Like, how old am I now? I just turned 36. That's like 17 years. 17 years later, like, I still am like proving myself to this, this boss. <laughs> I'll finally have a place where I can be safe. I'll finally be seen for the significance. I'll be recognized for what I bring to the table. I'll finally be loved. I'll finally be worth something. But as anybody who's familiar with false summits are, and really all of us are, we're all familiar with that. We all know what that feeling's like. Success, congratulations. You get a level up, but really you're just starting over because now you have to hit something else. You start over only with higher stakes, and you know it's inevitable you're going to screw up. It's inevitable you're going to fail. And you're just going to come crashing down. And all those good feelings that you managed to accumulate in your way up that mountainside, just poof, gone. Just like that. You kind of have to ask yourself, is it really success if it can be taken away from you? Is it really success if, you can be, if it can be taken away from you? Now, some of us are more familiar with failure than others. Not going to name names because I want Pastor Greg to feel bad about things himself. It's really nice having someone I can make fun of. Again, it's, it's just deflection, right? You're seeing just deflection. Just if you, if you fail, well, you suck. I suck. Guilt. Shame. Get, on, get back up. Keep going. Try harder. Fail. Repeat. And this, that's a cycle. And the interesting thing is, is like, regardless of whether the outcome is a success or a failure, it's kind of the same thing over and over. Like, whether you win or you lose, like, you're doing the same thing over and over. You're trying to hit a benchmark. And then if you win, great. Well, now there's the next benchmark. Keep going. If you fail, well, here's the next benchmark. Keep going. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what about things that happen to me that are beyond my ability to control? You know, maybe there's an accident and you get, 
you get physically hurt and your, your capacity is, is, you know, is, is depleted, whether it's your physical capacity or emotional or mental capacity or whatever, and suddenly you can't perform the way you used to. Boy, we know what that feels like. The inevitable result of this is you find yourself weary, weary and heavy laden, tired, absolutely exhausted. When you're living in the laws of the kingdom of the world, your ability to achieve and possess the things that give you a semblance of joy or peace or you know, rest, etc., your ability to, to experience that is directly tied to your ability to control other people, your ability to manipulate other people, your ability to control situations and circumstances. And that only leads to conflict. That only leads to frustration. At the end of the day, you will come across a problem bigger than you can control. You will encounter circumstances far beyond your capacity. You're condemned to a fail, try harder, and repeat treadmill. You're chasing a carrot in a race where the finish line is just a few more paces ahead. Even if you manage to achieve, it's gone in a whisper. <laughs>